Hello folks, so there's no Facebook gathering today because we're trying something new. Uh, we have 25 people gathering at Westcliff Hall at 11 and 3 for the simple gathering. So our next step at working out how to do in-person gatherings together. But um, I know not everyone has been able to make it and um, we've had to close the bookings um, so I thought I would also record a short thought here and link to a worship song. Um, that could stir you for kind of church at home if you haven't been able to join us. And this will also be the archive um, sermon video we put on YouTube and things like that. So we're going to jump straight in. I want us to um, just think about where we were last week. So we had Jenny Taylor with us on Facebook. Perhaps you were able to join in with us. And Jenny was talking to us about the transforming power of life with God. If you haven't been able to listen to that sermon yet, really encourage you to find it on our YouTube channel um, or our website, kairoschurch.net. Um, fantastic introduction to this new series we're looking at, thinking about where and how does God want to bring change to our lives um, and through us to people around us. So Jenny started that off last week and she mentioned Romans 12 and we're going to focus on Romans 12 a bit today as we think about the transforming the everyday. We're going to be thinking about how God wants to transform our everyday and through us transform everyday places and the people that we meet through us. And I'm going to jump straight in and read Romans 12. I'd love you um, at some point to read Romans 12, probably the whole bit from 1 to 20, oh not 23, 1 to 13. Um, Romans 12, 1 to 13. But I'm just going to read the first couple of verses for us. This is from the message translation. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. We believe that God wants to change our way of thinking, change our way of living so that we have an impact on people and places around us. God's strategy, God's strategy for changing the world is to transform people and release them to transform every level of society. And some of that will be big and dramatic and we'll be looking at some more dramatic ways in which God wants to do that later um, in this series. But lots of that is every day. The places we spend most of our time with the people that are gathered there. God wants to empower us to be agents of transformation who don't conform to the pressure around us, but are transformed and bring transformation. That is tremendous good news and is the call on every Christian, whether you spend most of your time at home or um, in community areas and community centres or at a workplace, or at school, um, or in all sorts of other places, God commissions you as an agent of transformation to bring positive change where you are. But the world also has an agenda. The world wants to change us as well. The world wants to conform us so that we're less like God and more like everybody else. So that our fire, our fervency, our passion gets dimmed. So that our love gets blunted. Um, and so that we become um, a bit more compromised. Jesus says famously, doesn't he, that Christians are like light and salt 
bringing light everywhere and spreading flavour into all places. But then he says that if we lose that saltiness, well, what are we good for? But God wants to bring transformation through us. Think of it like this. Think of it like your shoes. I have a few pairs. I have some cosy slippers. I've worn them quite a lot in 2020 and 2021. I've got um, some running shoes that I wear when I'm trying to keep fit, usually early in the morning, huffing and puffing, trying to do 5k. I have some everyday shoes that are just my kind of, this is what I wear when I'm out and about doing my normal stuff. Um, I've got some smart shoes when I am in a formal situation and I have to look smart. Um, and I've got walking boots when I'm off going on rugged terrain and things like that. Now I wear these uh, in different places. My slippers I wear when I'm feeling cosy, when I want to relax, when I want a bit of warmth and a bit of comfort at home. Um, more recently, I've worn my walking boots quite a lot because I've been doing lots of walking and talking with people and also blogging. And often when um, I'm wearing these right now, I'm in a conversation with someone, chatting, or I'm praying as I'm doing some blogging around Harrogate or prayer walking around. Um, my, um, my smart shoes, I have a brown pair and a black pair, often um, are in situations where I know I need to bring my A game. I might just kind of dial up the volume and the humour and the, the meaner slightly um, to kind of to present my best to people. Or I might be working in a formal situation and just kind of um, being on my guard a little bit and, and, and making sure I'm aware of the other people and situations around me. My everyday shoes, um, well, I just do a lot of plodding in them. And I may well um, just uh, kind of take the places I go and the people I see for granted when I'm wearing these shoes because, you know, it's just everyday life. But God wants to transform me and you in every place where our feet walk and our shoes are pl um, placed. You see, when we put on new shoes, we are adapting we're putting on the right footwear for the right situation. And we adapt ourselves, we change ourselves depending on the environments we go into. Um, at home, I might adapt myself to relax, to be comfortable, but in my desire for comfort, actually I might end up um, reaching out to things that aren't so helpful. Um, habits, uh, to perhaps to do with um, consuming food or drink or watching things that actually aren't going to help me love God more and love other people more. And so um, I can be conformed when I'm wearing my cosy slippers. When I'm bringing my A game and in my formal shoes, I can be conformed by my perception of um, how different people want me to react to the challenges and opportunities in the room. And I can present a different bend to actual me in those formal settings. My everyday footwear, I can just take things for granted. I can get down. Everything can just become a bit flat. We allow ourselves, because we're humans and humans are great at adapting, we allow ourselves to be changed by the situations we face. And some of that, little bits of that are absolutely fine. And are gifts. It's part of being human to be able to read a room and respond well to it. But some of it can dull our ability to follow Jesus. It's okay to put on different shoes for different situations. But what's important, what's really key, is the feet that are inside those shoes. And your feet are you. And they're attached to the rest of you. And being someone who um, brings change and brings, brings transformation means allowing God to change who you are so that that you-ness is the same in all the situations you find yourself in. Pushing back against 
the forces of the world that would make us cynical, that would make us selfish, that would make us less than we're called to be. And allowing God to change our minds and our feet so that we are people who change the world around us. A different image, if you like, that I've heard other people use. You can be um, a, uh, a thermostat person or a thermometer person. Thermometer person measures the temperature around and just kind of feeds back what everyone else is like. A thermostat sets the temperature. And we're called to be thermostat people. We're called to be people who everywhere we put our feet, a little bit more of God's goodness and kingdom and love grows. So that our shoes leave an impression of God's goodness and God's grace. What might this look like? Well, it might look like Asking God to help you love and treat kindly a person um, in your community or at your work or that you see day to day that you find really um, difficult or hard to get on with. Or it might be looking for ways that you can simply but generously bless those around you because you know God loves them and you want to do something special for them. Or it might be choosing in situations to say no to what you think you want and you need and yes instead to um, what God's saying to you other people need. And as you go to the different everyday places where you spend your everyday life, you can have conversation with God. Say, what is the change that you might want to bring here? What is the thing that you might want to do here in this situation? So I'd love you just to spend a moment or two to think about the following few questions. Where will your feet take you this week? What are the everyday situations that you're going to walk in? And what shoes are you likely to wear there? You might even like to show other people in your households the different shoes you wear this week and what the situations are that you wear them in. In those places, where is there pressure to change? To be different to who God's called you to be or to be less than who God's called you to be? And how might God bring transformation through you in that place? Where will your feet take you this week? What shoes will you wear? Where is there pressure in those places for you to change? And how might God and you bring transformation? discovered a great song um, that uh, Thy Kingdom Come and LICC have put out recently um, that uh, talks about God renewing, transforming, renewing and healing society. Um, it's a fantastic prayer that God would use everyday people like us in everyday places to bring change. I'm going to share the link to that song um, in the comments below. What I'd love to encourage you to do is play it and listen. And as you do so, pray for the everyday places where you will be this week. That God would help you bring transformation. And pray that God would change your way of thinking so that you are able to live for him. Paul says uh, in this passage in Romans that that, that is true worship. I know we all miss singing in big crowds um, and being together, loads of us. But isn't it interesting that Paul says, being the kind of person that just lives for God and brings everyday transformation, that is the true worship that God wants. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to be people who give our everyday lives to you and who see you change us 
so that our everyday places and the people in them are also transformed for your kingdom, for your glory. Amen. We'll be back here next week on Facebook at 10.45 um, and looking forward to connecting with you then. God bless. Bye bye.